and welcome back to my nail corner. There are my Builder Gel nails all ready to go on my left hand and my right hand is wearing Pampered Pretty's Hidden Treasure. This is a thermal that has a milky white base when warm and like a charcoal gray base when cold and these beautiful, beautiful opalescent flakes in it. I really enjoyed wearing this color. Um, but I'm here to talk to you today about Bombshell Nail Co. The owner of Bombshell reached out to me on Instagram and asked if I wanted to try some of their products. So I picked these two colors based on swatches I saw on the website that drew my eye. And this one is called Jester. It has Mylar flakes in it. And if I'm being totally honest, I don't think I've ever worked with Mylar flakes before. So I did a quick swatch of this and need to look into a bit further how to work with Mylar flakes um, before I consider myself any kind of expert or share any of that with you guys. This one is called Rose Quartz and it has beautiful pink and gold foils in it and it was just gorgeous. I was really excited to get this and create a look for you guys and introduce you to, to Bombshell. So um, I'm going to use a white shimmery uh, color called M Moonlight by Virgo and Gem as my alternate color for this Manny. And I'm going to get right into my dip application. And then while I'm doing that, I will tell you a little bit about um, Bombshell just from what I experienced. Um, the foil that you're going to see me use was really easy to work with. I really liked it. Their website is really cool. I... Um, I liked the swatches on the website. I'm going to show you a couple here so you have an idea what I'm talking about. So a couple of these that drew my eye were Secret Garden, um, Breakfast Cereal, and then I'm just going to scroll through a little bit here so you can see. I'll pop it on the screen. Um, I love the swatches because they're just, they're not like a, from what I can gather, not a digital rendering of a color. They're actually like a micro shot of the glitter, which is I think really cool and I haven't seen that a lot before so I thought that was really fun and easy to shop the website uh, the the minis several of them that I looked at so maybe all of them I didn't look at every single one on the website were like $4.99 like steal you guys I felt I felt ridiculous shopping because I could just add keep adding to cart um, I have a discount code below and the website in the description box so if you're interested in shopping definitely check them out because yeah I have no complaints they were really cool and I have a couple other glitters saved to my cart right now because I'm really excited to try them out I know uh, Carol Annette had tried them out also and she had one of their uh, solid like medium pinks in her Manny and she really liked the way it performed as well so yeah I think good news all around, another small brand to shop from, so definitely give them a look. So today I am using my nail addiction liquids. They're always on my desk with my like my stash of liquids that I would reach for regularly. And every time I pull them out, I am just reminded how much I really love them. Like I just really enjoy her liquids. And I don't know if I've mentioned before, but the activator from Nail Addiction has like a slight like vanilla scent to it. And I said that one time and I questioned myself because I thought maybe I was losing my mind. But she confirmed for me that it does actually have a vanilla scent to it, which who doesn't want activator that just smells a tiny bit better than the chemical smell that usually comes with activator. So if you're in the market for liquids, check out Nail Addiction because I really enjoy those. And I have a discount code below and they also have just some great powders over there too. So I don't waste, I don't waste if I don't have to. And so I'm just tapping this little excess in. I was like, I can't believe I just spilled this jar before I even used it, but it poured back in nicely. So I'm gonna get into dipping into this foil. You could put this into a cupcake liner and lay your nail into it like I typically do, but I thought I was going to give it a shot because my nails aren't super long right now into this mini and I was able to lay my nail flat into that. And then the foils, as you could see, if they were poking up or whatever, I just patted them down and they laid really flat. They were very pliable and just super easy to work with so I really enjoyed working with this um, this powder I found it like like I said just super super easy to work with and I love the way it looked in the end 
So now I'm going to show you the cupcake liner situation and how um, it'll perform pretty much the same way as it did when I was dipping it into the mini. So whatever works for you, have at it. Um, while I'm dipping, I will tell you I apologize that my voice is a little bit sick sounding because we do indeed have COVID in this whole house. It started with my son. Two days later, my husband was symptomatic, so they probably got the same exposure. And then, um, so that was on a Friday. And then by like Monday night, Tuesday morning, my daughter and I were symptomatic. And now this is Friday when I'm recording this. And um, yeah, we're kind of sick as dogs. My husband is seeing a lot of improvement today, but his taste buds seem to be going. So he drank coffee this morning and he said, did you do something different to this coffee? And I was like, not really. And he said it tasted terrible. So he said apparently like only the bitter flavor came through and none of the rest. So he ended up dumping out his coffee. He made tea. He said that didn't taste very much. Um, he ate something else and he said it's, it's very strange. I know a lot of you have probably had COVID by now. I mean, a lot of people have, but he said it, it's weird. Like his brain knows what the food he's eating is supposed to taste like. So he like feels like it for a moment, like I, he can taste it, but then he realizes he's not really tasting it. It's very strange. And honestly, I'm not looking forward to it if that's coming my way. So my son is having a similar thing where I haven't said he's lost his taste. He's had an altered sense of taste. So things that he generally loves, I'll give him and he they taste terrible to him. So that's a strange thing to try to conquer with an eight-year-old. He's been surviving for about a week on like five foods that he will say taste normal to him. So it's a, a life of, you know, graham crackers and mac and cheese and bananas. It's it's very strange over here. So anyway, we're technically in quarantine until next Friday. Um, that would be 10 days from when I was symptomatic since I was the last one that got symptoms. So as long as we are fever free and symptoms have improved by that time, then we're allowed out of our bubble. So that would be good. Um, it's crummy timing. My dad lives nearby and he's coming up on 74 at the end of um, this month. And so we we usually see a lot of him but have kept away because obviously I don't want to get him sick. But today, um, Friday, is the fifth anniversary of when my mom passed. And it's been a really hard day to not be around him and give him a big hug and just kind of get through it together like we have every year in the past so if you're thinking of him and you're someone who prays just send a little prayer up for some comfort for our family while we get through this but I do have to say I'm really fortunate that we have a lot of people around us that have offered to drop off groceries or just anything else we need and just have been very caring from a distance so we are well cared for and supported and thankfully none of us have had extreme um, just respiratory distress or anything like that in fact the cough has been the mildest for all of us so um the, for my husband and i like the body aches that came with this and just like a headache that won't quit have been probably the most annoying of the symptoms after the fevers settled down the fevers are brutal i'll tell you what anyway enough complaining out of me but I know so many of you have reached out and said you know feel better soon or we hope you're doing okay and so I really appreciate all the support from you guys and um, and I'm thankful that I have you guys to chat with so I'm gonna finish capping and clear here I'm going to activate and then file and buff off camera and then come back to do a little bit of nail art so hang in there and I'll be right back with you
so there wasn't too much filing and buffing to do. This applied really nicely and so I did file and buff, cleaned up my shape, and now I am back and I am going to work with some striping tape. If you've worked with striping tape before, then you know what I'm in for. <laughs> you guys, striping tape is kind of a pain in the butt, if I'm being honest. I've had this in my kind of nail art collection for a long time. I think I used it once and then I thought I should throw that away because it was the worst. But I had seen something similar in design to what I'm about to do on somebody else's Manny recently and I thought, I really like that. I wanna pull out my striping tape and give it a shot. And this pink and gold foil became like the perfect uh, combo for me to do that. So if you pull out your striping tape, once you get the edge free, use some little scissors. I'm speeding up all this like busy work and then cut your strip into kind of small pieces. Now, this is just how I did it. I don't know what's going to be best for everybody else. I applied mine right over the activated and filed and buffed nail. Some people say it really sticks much better if you do it over a like glossy surface. So they say go ahead and top coat, then do your striping tape and then do a gel top coat over that. Um, I did find that this time it stuck pretty well to my activated nail. I kept pressing it more and more because I was scared it was going to pop off, but uh, it held pretty tight. So. I will say I'm making it look a little bit easier than it is. Like in this video, I go, what am I complaining about? But it was just a pain. It was a pain to pull it off the roll. It was a pain to like work with my fingers with tape sticking off of them. It was just a little bit of a hassle. But if you have some patience going into it, like I knew this was going to be a pain. Um, so I went into it with a little bit more patience than I might normally have. Uh, I picked three different colors. I had like a brighter pink, a lighter pink, and then the gold, and I thought that would pull together nicely with the foils in the dip that I chose. And so I went ahead and just kind of layered them in like a crisscross fashion. I'm gonna skip ahead now that you've seen how I did it and show you what I came up with, and that is this kind of look. So I did four strips on each nail, in like a crisscross pattern. So what I chose to do is leave the excess tape hanging off my nail and go in with my gel base. So I went in with my gel base, which you're gonna see here, and then cured my gel base. And then I did my gel top and cured my gel top. So you're gonna see all that in just a second here. And then I went in with little scissors and clipped the tape. Now, what I would probably recommend based on this experience is doing your gel base then going ahead and clipping the edges with either cuticle nippers would probably have done better I just had little tiny scissors that I used to clip the tape that's what I used um, but get as close as you can to that edge and then do your gel top coat because it worked out okay, but I would say doing it this way and clipping the edges afterwards, I still ended up having to do maybe like a little bit of touch up filing to the tiny bits of tape that were sticking out of the edge. And I think I would have had a much smoother edge to my nail had I clipped them before I went ahead and finished off with my gel top coat. Cause my gel top coat could have just encapsulated those edges really nicely and made them nice and smooth and I would have been done. Um, but instead I did have to do a little bit of finicking with them and I did that off camera. But I wanted to tell you guys my experience so that if you do this, um, that would be my recommendation is after you've cured your gel base, go ahead and I would clip those kind of tails of the striping tape off because now that like once you've cured your gel base on there they're stuck like they're going to be pretty secure to the nail like I wouldn't go ahead and like pull at them or anything but you should be able to clip the edges just fine um, so that's what I would do that's my experience so I'm going to finish up my gel top coat and then come back with some final thoughts for you guys
All right, so here is the final look. What do you guys think? I really liked the way this turned out. It felt a little bit outside of my shell, um, but I really liked it. So I am finishing off with my cuticle candy as per usual. I highly recommend getting some cuticle oil for after every mani, and candy skincare is my fave for all my skincare needs. There is a discount code in the description box below. And by the way, this mani glows because moonlight glows. So check out Bombshell Nail Co. and let me know your thoughts. And I will see you guys in my next vid. Bye now. Thank you.